Hey, what's going on, everybody? Dealing with magical cans here. So real quick, before we get into the video, I just want to announce that I have some Smog Akasha babies that are going to be born in the next month or two and will be ready to go three months or so after hatching. So if you're interested in one of these red body blue bar ambulobi babies, then go ahead and head over to magicalcams.com where you can put down a deposit for one. And lastly, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload some more sweet DIY cam content. But anyway, now let's get into what this video is about. So a little over a year ago in April of 2020, I made a video showing everybody how to do a DIY fogger. A lot of the feedback I got on it was that it was <laughs> it was quite crazy with the PVC and the huge container of water and so on and so forth. So I needed another fogger for uh, another rack. So I made a fogger out of a smaller container and I found a lot better solution than the PVC. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it and hopefully this one's a lot more doable for those of you that are interested. So here's a list of the majority of the stuff I'll be using in the video. First is some hose clamps. Next is some corrugated plastic tubing. I'll also be using a neoprene grommet, a 120 millimeter waterproof muffin fan, followed by a Vivo Sun fan speed controller, as well as some barbed PVC fittings. Next is some peel and stick foam window seal. And of course, my mist maker or fogger, which is the House of Hydro brand. Some Velcro straps, a plastic container, as well as some drill bits and a set of hole saws. You can get a real cheap hole saw set at Harbor Freight for about 20 bucks, and I highly suggest you get one. And of course, a drill, some sort of strong tape, such as painter's tape or even plumbing tape. And lastly, a filter for that muffin fan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ready my container for all of the fogging equipment. Now, I suggest getting something with a very flat lid. There are other kinds of lids that have like designs in them and I try to stray away from those just because they complicate things to a level of which I don't find necessary to deal with. You can see on this lid here how it has two ridges in the middle. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just find a container with a very flat lid. What I like to do before going all willy-nilly and just blasting holes into projects and things like that is to kind of get a general idea of the layout of all of the things that I'm putting together. So here you can see me put all of those barbed fittings and then the fan on the lid to kind of get a general idea of how I want this to look when it's finished. Once I was satisfied with the placement of everything, I removed everything except the muffin fan. And the first thing I'm gonna do is install that fan. I do this by setting the fan in its final permanent spot on the lid and then use some painter's tape to secure it in place to the lid. I then find a drill bit that's as close to the size of the mounting hardware that comes with the fan to drill holes into the lid. If it's a little bigger, that's fine. You just want to make sure that the screw can fit through the hole and the drill bit can drill all the way through the plastic after going through the fan. And you can see here that after one hole is drilled, I then partially screw in that hardware to keep the fan in place while I drill the other holes. I really prefer this method as opposed to just drilling four holes and then hoping that the the screws will align with those holes because it really ensures that everything is dialed in perfectly. Once those four holes are drilled, I then remove the hardware the tape and then the fan from the lid of the container. Now that I've completely avoided doing complicated math in order to find the holes for the fan hardware, I then use a straight edge 
and line it up diagonally with the holes that I drilled, draw a line from corner to corner, and then flip it around and do the other diagonal measurement. This way, with that X drawn on top of the lid, I know exactly where the center of that fan will be sitting. And once again, I avoided some crazy math, so I think some, some of you will probably really, <laughs> really enjoy that. All right, now it's time to bust out the sweet hole saws. I, I love hole saws. I don't, I don't know why. I'm, I'm a weirdo. So uh, that's why I think that you should just go get a set at Harbor Freight. It's like 20 bucks. Just do yourself a favor and go get a set of them. But anyway, uh, <laughs> when it comes to selecting a hole saw for whatever fan you've chosen, there's a couple little things that you want to be considerate of before drilling the hole. You essentially want to find the largest hole saw size that you can find for the fan that you're using. Yours will be a little different than mine here. However, just make sure that the hole's not too big to where you can't mount the fan. And then there's another part of it where the hole saw may look like it's the right size, but there's a potential that you'll be maybe a few centimeters off in the diameter of the fan itself. So like you can see here that although this particular hole saw looks like it will be the right size, in reality, it's just a hair too large. Now the issue with it being just a hair too large is that debris and bugs will be able to get inside if they choose to. So since that large hole saw didn't work, I chose to go the next size down with the kit I had, which was four inches or 102 millimeters. Now this part is crucial before you take the hole saw to the top of the lid, because you wanna make sure that this hole's gonna be centered. So instead of just going and drilling the huge hole and hoping that it's gonna be centered, I really suggest drilling a pilot hole like I'm doing here. This will act as a guide for the hole saw so that the placement of this fan hole will be perfect. And of course, you can see the reasoning for having drawn that X with the marker earlier, because that's my center point at which I'm going to drill my pilot hole as well as the main hole saw hole. And now time for the fun part. <laughs> this, this is, hole saws are fun. Okay. so. When using a larger hole saw like this, my suggestion is to not apply a lot of force and let the drill and the hole saw do all the work here. If you put too much pressure uh, down on the lid of the container, there's a potential that you may crack it. So just be patient. Oh, and of course, make sure that you have a steady grip on the container that you're drilling into so that you don't hurt yourself. Yeah, don't don't do that. We don't we don't want you to hurt yourself. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Uh, anyway, and then I take a razor blade to get off all the little extra f plastic hangy mabobs. Those little are they burrs? The plastic burrs? Yeah, that and I use that in correlation with sandpaper to really clean up that hole and make it nice and pretty. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is prep some holes for these barbed PVC fittings. Essentially, these will be what I'm going to attach my fogging hoses to. Uh, they are barbed on one end, and then the other end is threaded kind of like a hose. So that way, once the holes are drilled, I can go ahead and screw those into the lid. So anyway, I place these fittings in the general area of where I want them to be, and then I use my ruler to measure out and mark exactly where these will be going. You don't have to mark it, you can just wing it here, but I'm a perfectionist, and I want to make sure that these are the perfect distance from each other. And, you know, uh, yeah, nobody's gonna see it, but it still makes me happy. So don't judge me. Now I essentially repeat the steps that I just did with the larger fan hole by drilling pilot holes and then selecting a hole saw that's not too wide. Essentially you want to make sure that the hole saw you're using here is not wider in diameter than the threads of the fitting. And here's a little helpful tip. When drilling these holes for the fittings, you're gonna have these little plastic discs that are what's left over from the hole you drilled. 
If you leave those in the hole saw, then the odds are that you're not gonna be able to drill additional holes very easily. So make sure to take those out in between the holes that you drill. And additionally, if you're unsure of the hole saw size that you need to use, get out your handy dandy tape ruler or tape ruler. Yeah, no, tape measure or ruler and be positive. Because once you drill a hole, you can't, can't undrill a hole. So just be positive here. I'll also mention that I'm using two different sizes of fogging tubing, which is why you'll see me change up the size of hole saw that I'm using here. And once all those holes were cleaned up, I then screw in my PVC fittings. And yes, make fun of me if you want, but I couldn't get them screwed in by hand, so I used a towel, and that didn't work. So I used a wrench, and that worked, so use a wrencher. Don't try to be cool and hurt your hands, just accept the fact that you're a weak little girl like I am, and uh, you can't get them in by hand, so... Plus, the tighter the better. That just means that you're gonna have an airtight seal for your fogging tubes, so that's great. Now it's time to prep the base of the reservoir for the Mist Maker power cord. This is where I'm going to be using a neoprene grommet. So, a couple things here regarding the grommets. You first wanna make sure to find a grommet that is big enough to allow you to fit the part of the Mist Maker power cord that connects to the transformer through the reservoir. I made the mistake of not taking that into consideration and it was kind of a pain in the butt to uh, go ahead and fix. So this is why I make these videos so you can learn from my stupid mistakes. But anyway, once you find a grommet with a large enough diameter, you wanna make sure that it has a groove down the center of the side, if that makes sense, so that the plastic will be able to sit in between either side of that grommet. The next thing you're looking for is to have the center hole be the size of the power cord. In my case, it was a quarter inch, so I made sure that that center hole was one quarter inch. Now, when going to drill the hole for this grommet, you wanna drill a hole just a hair larger than the diameter of the inside of that groove on the side. The way I figured that out is by taking a digital caliper to measure that groove. If you're unsure of the measurements or you don't have a digital caliper, the packaging for the neoprene grommet should have all of the measurements and specs for you. That way you don't have to guess. For example, on the grommet that I'm using, the first measurement on the packaging is a one quarter, which is one quarter inch, and that is the size of that hole in the center. The next measurement, one and a half inches, is the total diameter of the grommet. Seven sixteenths of an inch is how thick the grommet is. And then one and one quarter inch is the inside diameter of the groove. After I expanded and cleaned the hole, I then took the base and lid of the container and rinsed it off in the sink. Now that all of that is clean, it's time for me to insert my grommet into the hole I just drilled. So now you might be wondering how I'm actually gonna get the power cord in the center of that grommet. To achieve this, I take a razor blade and cut through on one side of the grommet, like you see right here. Next, I put the mist maker in the base of the reservoir and feed that power cord out through the hole I just drilled. And then I wrap the rubber grommet around the power cord. And to get the grommet in the hole of the reservoir, it takes a bit of finesse and it should be pretty tight. That way fog's not gonna creep on out of the reservoir. I find it easiest to kind of twist it in there, kind of like a bottle cap, if you will, except at an angle. So the first part of the grommet that makes contact with the container is the groove. Now we gotta install our muffin fan. And why it's called a muffin fan is beyond me because I don't think it tastes very good. Not that I tried, but anyway, the filter pieces for the fan require you to install the first layer of it with the hardware of the fan. So I go ahead and ready that, and then attach the fan to the lid of the reservoir using the screws and bolts. Something else I'd be remiss in not mentioning is that the hardware that comes with this fan off Amazon is not stainless steel which is weird because the fan is advertised as waterproof, so that hardware is prone to rusting. I would take those bolts to the hardware store and pick up some stainless steel versions of them. 
After the fan was bolted to the lid of the reservoir, I then attached the second and third layer of the fan's filter. And to do that, it simply just snaps on. The next order of business was to go ahead and make this container airtight using the peel and stick window seal. I applied that wherever the lid made contact with the base of the container. It's exciting. This is almost done. Or so you think. Dun dun dun. Spoiler alert. Uh, anyway, so I needed to go ahead and attach my fogging hoses. The way I attach them to those PVC fittings is with some metal hose clamps. Now there's a couple way of tightening these hose clamps. You can use a flathead screwdriver or you could use a socket wrench. I prefer a socket wrench because it makes things fairly quick, but most people usually just have a flathead screwdriver and that works just fine. This here is a splicer and you may be asking yourself, what the heck's a splicer? Well, if you need to make a longer fogging hose, you can use a splicer to attach the ends of two fogging hoses together with the splicer and those hose clamps. The last step was getting all of the power equipment installed on the rack and readied for the fogger. The first thing is this fan speed controller, which if you remember me saying, it wasn't actually for the fan. This is to control the amount of power that the mist maker or fogger puts out. That way it's not running full speed, 100% fog all the time. The device plugs into an extension cord, which goes to a timer, and then the fogger plugs into the bottom of that controller. And then I use some zip ties to go ahead and mount it to the rack. Oh yes, and when selecting a power control like this, you wanna make sure that the device can power the mist maker you're using at its maximum capacity. So this fan speed controller was rated at three amps and the mist maker was about half that if I remember correctly. Once the controller was mounted in a good place, I then plugged the mist maker's transformer into that controller. And then I needed to install the actual fan speed controller. This device works in conjunction with the other controller for the mist maker to really dial in the amount of fog produced and how quickly it's being outputted into the enclosures. For example, if you're creating fog and you have the fan at full speed without the actual fan speed controller, the fog is just gonna dissipate in the high winds. I prefer to have the fog roll into the enclosures at a slow pace to emulate naturalistic fog. After that was installed on the rack with some zip ties, I took the end of that power cord that didn't go into the wall, the non-AC side, and plugged it into the fan. You can see in the video how the pins on the fan fit into that side of the power cord perfectly. Once that was completed, I then took the cord of the mist maker coming from the reservoir and plugged that into the transformer. Unfortunately, the spot that I had originally intended for that fogger to live did not work out, so I had to move it to the top of the rack, which involved me having to move some of the controllers and things like that. Just in case you're one of those people that noticed that in the last shot, the fogger isn't where it will be in the future of the video. <laughs> Once everything was resituated, I then used some Velcro to attach the hoses onto the rack where I wanted them. After that, I plugged in the mist maker into a smart timer thing. It's a smart socket. Yep, that's it's a smart socket. And I highly recommend them because you're able to control everything from your phone and you can set schedules so you can intermittently fog if you prefer. And if you have a power outage for some reason, you don't have to reset these sockets the same way you would with a mechanical timer. Are you excited? Cause I'm excited or I was, maybe not now that I'm editing this video, but I was excited at the time to try this out and I hope you are too. Hope you're excited to see me test this out. Um, anyway, so got some water in the container and powered everything on. I will say don't run the fogger during the day with the heat on because fog and heat do not go together. That's a, another subject for another video, which I won't discuss here, but for the demonstration purposes of this video, I will be fogging while the lights are on. 
And I must say, I was very thrilled with the way everything was working out. I thought I had aced it, and unfortunately, there was one huge problem. And I'll explain why. The first issue was with the reservoir. Even though I had put that peel and stick window seal on the edge of the lid, there was still fog coming out the longer sides of that container. The solution to this would have been to get a container with two latches on either side of the long sides of the reservoir, totaling four latches, instead of the single latches on either side of the short sides of the container. The other issue I noticed was that the way the latches were attached to this container were actually on the inside of it. So those latches don't attach airtight, and since the attachment sat inside the reservoir, fog was blowing out through the holes at which the latches were mounted to the container. The solution to that would have been to get a container with the latches not attached to the reservoir in such a way. Aside from the reservoir not being airtight, I was really not a big fan of the smaller fogging tubes. These came from the ZooMed Reptifogger expansion set, and I thought they'd be perfect for the smaller female enclosures that the majority of this fogger was for. However, it was just such a wimpy fog output and water kept building up very quickly in those smaller tubes. So that was something I also wanted to fix in addition to the fogger being airtight. So surprise, surprise, I didn't get things right. And hey, you know what? That's how I live my life. You know, sometimes I don't get things right the first time and that's okay. That's how I learn. And I make these videos for those of you that want to make these things and want to make these things right the first time. So you can see me go back to the drawing board if you want to continue watching this video and see me correct my mistakes. So the first and most important thing I needed to do was find a new type of container. And I ended up using a gasket container. These containers already have the foam built into the lid to make them airtight. I originally intended to start with one of these containers because I knew they worked based off of my experience with them last February. However, this time I could not find them anywhere. I don't know if Sterilite stopped making them or what happened, but they were impossible to find or they were really expensive and you had to buy like six. Luckily, we have this place out in Los Angeles, California, called the Container Store, and they had these containers. So if you need one of these containers, go on their website, and I'm sure you can order one to be shipped to you. So once I got the new gasket container, I repeated the process that you've seen thus far in the video. Except I haven't made up my mind on the smaller fogger hoses yet, so just bear with me till I get to that part. And I'll also show you how I expanded the holes, since that can be quite tricky with the hole saws. Something that I didn't mention previously that I feel is worth mentioning is that the muffin fan you'll receive most likely has some arrows on one side, which indicate which direction that the fan will blow air. So when you place your fan or mount your fan to the top of the container, just make sure the arrows are down and towards those PVC fittings. One additional thing that I wanted to change on the reservoir was the hole size for the grommet. I figured making it one eighth of an inch larger would be beneficial to taking it on and off. So I used a one and three eighths inch spade bit or paddle bit. These things are a little bit cheaper than hole saws, but they can be tricky to use. My suggestion with these spade bits is to use the same rule of thumb that I suggested with hole saws and don't apply too much pressure when using them because you may potentially crack your container. So if you've been a trooper 
and have actually watched the video this far, you'll have noticed how much of a moron I can be. And you know what? I just want to thank you for your observations of my idiocy. But I was smart this time. And you're going to be proud of me because I tested this new setup before finishing it and putting it above the cages on the rack. This is when I realized that I like the output of the larger tubing much better than that of the small. The small tubing just put out an insufficient amount of fog for my liking, so you know what? I decided to change it. The caveat with hole saws is that once you hole saw out a hole, the center drill bit of the hole saw doesn't have anything to grab onto, thus making the hole saw slide around a lot on the hole you're trying to expand. What I ended up doing was taking an extra piece of lumber that was laying around and clamping it and the lid of the reservoir to my workstation. Having the wood clamped underneath the part of the lid where I was trying to expand those holes allowed for that center bit to have something to grab onto, thus making it ideal for expanding the holes for the larger PVC fittings. And from there, I uh, cleaned the holes and then attached all three quarter inch PVC fittings. I guess I should have mentioned that before in the video. These fittings have a three quarter inch barb and a three quarter inch threading. I ended up having to order more fogger tube for this project and fogging tubing on Amazon was like 15 bucks for two small pieces, which I would have had to order five sets of, which was expensive. So my workaround was to use some medical aerosol tubing, which I believe is used for like sleep apnea machines and things of the such. This stuff was only like four bucks for six feet. So I only had to order two sets of it to complete the project. It was even the same diameter as the typical fogging hose. So it was perfect. The only real setbacks with this product, in my opinion, is the fact that it doesn't expand and contract the way the typical fogging hose does, which means two things. The first thing being that it can't expand and contract means that whatever length it's cut to is the length that it will always be. If you need it to be longer or shorter, you'll either have to cut a new length of hose or cut off more from a piece that you've previously cut. And the second thing being that this product will not expand and contract is that it's not really malleable. It's not able to be bent into a fixed shape. However, that's not a deal breaker for me. I would have rather spent eight bucks than 75 bucks on some new tubing. If you're one of those people that's really a big fan of the fogging tubing and you don't need that much of it, it might just make more sense for you to buy the actual fogging tubing than this stuff. So going back to what I mentioned about this tubing not being able to be bent into a fixed shape, this means that the tubing will probably find a lot of ways to fall over or find a way to be horizontal, which means water will build up within the tubing. And if water builds up within the fogging tubing, then that means no fog will come out. So my simple workaround for this was to use some thick wire. I believe this was either 12 or 14 gauge and Velcro it to the tubing so that I will be able to bend it into vertical angles so that fog won't find a place to settle and turn into water within the tubing. And finally, the fogger was completed. The last thing that I needed to do was move the fogger back to the rack and test it one last time to ensure that it met my expectations. You know, for the cams. It's all about the cams, the, the spoiled lizards. Alrighty, here is the finished fogger. So I have the tubes coming down into the back and then I have one length of this aerosol tubing coming all the way down into these enclosures and then I also made use of zip ties for it because uh, I ran out of velcro but then I just hooked the wire on the end and then stuck that into the door of the enclosure that way the fog will or the tubing will stay uh, positioned so that the uh, the fog will go in the enclosure 
And there is <laughs> magma. And then I have it going over to this guy here. But anyway, I know it looks a little crazy. I just had the armature wire and everything and I figured this would be the least expensive option and it doesn't necessarily bug me and I can still just push this aside a little bit and then open up these enclosures. And it doesn't really bug me to do that. Uh, everybody's a little different though. So then to close it, I just go like this move this tubing out of the way here and up here and then we close it and then we have our setup here so this one is to control the fog output that this little machine makes and then this controls how fast the fan up here is spinning so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I do not advise turning it on during the day. Just at least with, with the heat lights uh, working. So I'll come down here and turn this on. This outlet. And then power this baby on. You just adjust the fan speeds and everything to get more or less fog and get the output that you want. And you can see like in the back over here, there's fog going in there and there's fog going in here as well as here. And then down here, we got some fog going into there and then we got fog going into here. And then we got the fog going into this one. And then if we come up here, to this guy's cage, he's also got fog going on in here. So, now we can turn this off again. And that's how that works. Alrighty, so that is pretty much everything. I appreciate those of you who stuck around through the end of the video, and I really hope you enjoyed that ending. I don't know, I had fun with it. I thought it was cool. 
But anyway, if you have any questions about the Fogger or you want help with your Fogger, go ahead and reach out to me. You can reach out via Instagram. That's at Magical Cams. You can reach out via Facebook. That's facebook.com slash Magical Cams. And you can reach out via email. That's Magical Cams at gmail.com. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And just another quick reminder that there will be Smog Akasha babies here in the next few months. So if you're interested, drop by MagicalCams.com and reserve yours today. Thank you for watching and good luck on your fogging adventures.